Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Lynn and today I am crafting with the Not Too Shabby Shop July subscription box of the month. This one is all about summertime coffee, so right up my alley. I was so excited um, that I get to craft with this kit this month. I'm also using an older Sizzix die set that helps you create flip it cards with um, this fun little pattern in the center here. And I like to do partial die cutting, so I use the same die that cuts out your card base and I do a partial die cut to get uh, full solid color panels on the left and the right and in the center as well. And that way I still have a nice strong card base that's cut from 120 pound cardstock, but I get that full splash of color all the way to the edge and I've used some pattern paper on one side that uh, awesome pattern paper is included in the kit and as I stamp out my sentiment here I uh, wanted to also remind you that this video is part of a YouTube video hop it's a hashtag driven hop so you want to click on or search for hashtag n2s summertime coffee and you'll see all of the amazing inspiration from my fellow team members not, the Not Too Shabby Shop is also offering a giveaway. So to enter the giveaway and get or be in for a chance to get a gift certificate to the Not Too Shabby Shop, you'll want to visit everybody's video along the hop. Be sure to like and comment on each video. I'm sure everybody would really appreciate if you subscribe to their channel as well. And then when you're finished with the hop, um, everybody's video sh description box should have a link to Rafflecopter. If you can't find it, you can always come back to this video and click on my link. And that Rafflecopter link will take you to a website where you can enter in all of your um, details so that the Not Too Shabby Shop can contact you if you are chosen as the winner. So... The reason why I'm doing some um, partial stamping here is because on this center um, shaped uh, die cut I have here, it doesn't quite fit the sentiment the way that it's laid out. And so I just want to reconfigure this a little bit and stack it in a stack of three lines instead of two lines. And that way it will fit. And even though I know that you can cut into your stamps and it doesn't doesn't hurt them, <laughs> um, doesn't ruin them, you can still stamp perfectly with them. I just can never really bring myself to do that. So what I'd rather do is just partially ink the stamp. And then where I have already stamped and I don't want to accidentally get like a ghost impression, sometimes I don't. I tried very hard to clean the um, part that I originally s stamped out with some stamp cleaner and I tried to wipe it really, really well, but you never know. Sometimes it looks clean, but there still might be just a little bit of residual ink there. So um, what you can do is you can just mask off the area that's already been stamped or the area under the um, you know, the part of the stamp that has already been inked up once previously. And um, and then that way you can be sure that you don't get any ghost impressions. And so you can always, you can always do that to try to uh, reconfigure sentiment stamps if you need um, to fit them onto a particular size or particular shape die cut um, like I did. So I've chosen this really fun um, iced coffee drink. I think this is really uh, more like a frappuccino because it's got the whipped cream <laughs> on the inside. And off camera, just to save a little bit of time, I went ahead and colored that in. And so now I'll show you how to assemble the flip it card. Because this is 120 pound heavyweight cardstock, even though the die does put in the score lines, I'm going to go back in and really redefine and deepen those score lines. Now, the leftmost score line, I am going to mountain fold. 
and the rightmost score line, I'm going to valley fold. And usually when you fold cardstock, you want to um, fold your score lines as mountain folds. So where the indentation of the score line is, you want to fold that down. So that's why I flipped the card over to the back and scored it from the back on that rightmost line because that is a uh, valley fold if you're looking at it from the front, but from the back, it's a mountain fold. Hope that made sense. Um, but the reason to do that is just to keep your cardstock nice and strong. And um, so I've just gotten into you know that habit. So here I've got that uh, partial die cut again. I use the seam die that cuts out my card base and I just die cut it from some um, solid color cardstock. You don't have to fully die cut the full uh, card base again. You can just do a partial die cut just for the panel that you want. And I did the same for that middle section that flips back and forth. And to get that one, you do have to die cut it twice because on um, on sort of that right half of the shape, it's not fully cut. So in order to fully cut that portion, you need to turn your die cut around and complete the cutting. And so now it's time to just um, assemble. and. The Sizzix die set does have a lot of sort of nested shape um, dies, as you can see here, um, which is kind of fun because you can use them as extra decorative elements. You can layer them up if you want. And um, it's nice that it fits in with this very unique shape in the center here. And there is a good variety of different sizes as well. Um, it would be nice if they did have a die that was, um, the full size of that shape, but, um, it's not that hard to do what I did, um, which was to, uh, die cut it twice in order to get it fully cut out. Um, so it's always an option. I guess, um, they figured it's better to give you more variety than to give you a die that's the exact same shape as what you can get from the, uh, main card base die itself. So I'm just trying to figure out, do I want the sentiment iced coffee obsessed on the inside or do I want it on the outside? And I chose to actually put it on the inside and I know it's stamped on white and my card base is white. So I could have just stamped this directly onto my card base. That would have been a really good option as well. Um, initially I thought it was actually going to go on the front. And the reason why I wanted to um, die cut it again out of white was that if you're looking at the card from this angle here from the front, part of where that um, edge is cut out, that right edge of the shape, it's actually um, the back side of the cardstock. So it doesn't have that nice finished edge. Um, so it was just a small little detail uh, that I wanted to actually layer that with uh, another die cut to get that smooth finish. But in the end, I wanted the um, coffee on the front. <laughs> so so I did um, choose some different mats and layers there. I, I, I think it's such a small detail. It's probably not going to be you know, all that noticeable, but it's one of those things where I, I always prefer that professional edge to be, you know, the most visible. Um, and if you're going to see something from multiple sides, I always try to have that nice um, finished edge on all the visible sides, but not able to do that this time around. Um, and so the other sentiment that I really liked, because I still wanted to have something on the front before you flip the card. So I added the <laughs> Java nice day sentiment, which I think is super funny. And I did try to color in my uh, Frappuccino to match some of the colors going on in the pattern paper that we got. I hope that you enjoyed my card today and be sure to check out the rest of the team's inspiration. Remember, it's hashtag N2S Summertime Coffee, all one word. There will be a link to it in the video title and description as well. Thanks so much. Until next time, happy crafting and have a fantastic day. Bye.